His process is purely logistical, narrowly focused by design. He is not here to take sides. It's not his place to formulate any opinion. No one who can afford him needs to waste time winning him to some cause. He serves no god or country. He flies no flag. If he's effective, it's because of one simple fact. He does not give a fuck. Chapter 1. An adept professional assassin known as the Killer stakes out a hotel room in Paris, awaiting the arrival of a target. Engaging in various activities such as eating, practicing yoga, listening to the Smiths, and talking with his handler, Hodges, on the phone. The killer reflects on the routine and somewhat monotonous nature of his job. Despite growing sleep-deprived, he maintains a cynical and empathy-free approach, emphasizing the importance of following his rules. When the target finally arrives with a dominatrix, the killer's attempt goes awry, accidentally shooting the dominatrix instead. He manages to escape the police and escapes to the United States using one of his many fake identities. Chapter 2. Returning to his opulent compound in the Dominican Republic, the killer discovers a break-in and that his partner, Magdala, has been attacked. Finding her in a sedated state at the hospital, he learns that she was tortured but managed to escape the assailants. Determined to find them, the killer tracks down the taxi driver, Leo, who drove the attackers to his home. Leo identifies them as the brute, a man who was injured on his leg, and a woman who resembled a Q-tip. After a confrontation, the killer impulsively breaks his no empathy rule by killing the taxi driver and resolves to hunt down the other assassins. Chapter 3 In New Orleans, the killer infiltrates Hodge's office, seeking information on the assassins. In a tense encounter, he uses a nail gun to torture Hodges for information, but Hodges unexpectedly dies sooner than the killer had anticipated. The killer then coerces Dolores, Hodges' secretary and handler, to reveal the assassin's identities. After obtaining the information, he breaks her neck as part of a deal for a quick and non-suspicious death. Chapter 4 Tracking the Brute to St. Petersburg, Florida the killer identifies him by his limp. After drugging the brute's dog, a fierce fight ensues with the assassin, culminating in the killer shooting the assassin and burning down his home with Molotov cocktail to erase evidence. Chapter 5 In Beacon, New York, the killer confronts the older expert assassin Q-Tip in a restaurant. As he joins her in her last supper of whiskey, they engage in a conversation about motivations and competence, leading to a fatal confrontation in a park. Chapter 6 Finally arriving in Chicago, the killer targets billionaire venture capitalist Claiborne. Through careful observation and resourceful tactics, he confronts Claiborne at gunpoint in his penthouse. Discovering that Claiborne hired Hodges to erase a trail without personal animosity, the killer spares him but warns of a slow death if ever pursued. Later, the killer returns to the Dominican Republic, having retired, and he is accompanied by a recovering Magdala. Thanks for watching. To catch all the latest from us, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified as soon as a new video drops. We'll see you in the next one.